Final take here, Scott Dixon will repeat as Indy 500 pull sitter. Um, I, uh, you know, I, so I was hard to disc say no. Right, exactly. <laughs> I mean, because it's happened to recent memory. Uh, you know, either Castro Nevis won three pulls in four years uh, from 2007 to 2010. More recently, Ed Carpenter sat on the pole in back-to-back -back years in 2013 and 2014. But those are the last time, uh, that's the last two times it's happened in the past 30 years. B. Scott, I believe you were uh, alive for the one other time it's happened, like in our lifetime, which is Rick Mears, I think, in 89, uh, secured his, his third pole um, in four <laughs> years. Um, so just outside our time frame, I just wanted to make a, a shot at you. I mean, that must have been alive for the other for a couple of them <laughs> yeah um but the bottom line even though dixon sat on the pole uh four times uh you know for the indy 500 back-to-back -back pulls is a rare feat also dixon has not started p1 since last indy 500 so he's not only got a long streak without a win he's got a long Man, streak without a pull if so, he's already pulling speeds like yeah, he is now second, yeah he was literally and, second today i think he was second or third in the test too today was pretty warm it's it's going to be interesting this weekend. I'll say this now to get it out of the way. Saturday, there's a good chance of rain and storms. So Sunday could get really interesting with trying to get all the qualifying in. And it's going – so it's going to be a green track. And if you watch the race on Sunday, you saw Townsend Bell describe what a green track is like. <laughs> The granola bar. With the granola <laughs> bar, which was pretty insane. Pretty incredible. Yeah, but not only is it going to be a green track, but the temperature is supposed to be down in the mid to low, the low to mid 60s for the high that day. So right now it's warmer than it would, it's going to be for qualifying. So speeds are going to be through, I mean, they're going to, it's going to be a fast track. Let's just put it that way. Um, but it could be a slick track too. Not much rubber down. So, oh, it's so hard because Scott Dixon, it's so hard to pick against him this. when it comes to qualifying for the 500. It is so hard, especially when he's putting up the numbers already. But I'm going to say he does not repeat because there are a lot of drivers today that were just getting their, they were out scuffing tires. They were just getting tires prepared for the week, prepared for the weekend getting their cars loose, getting everything shook out. I mean, you look at like Ed Carpenter and Connor Daly, they were way down the speed charts, but I expect those guys to be up near the top 12 come this weekend. Same thing with a lot of the, some of the Penske drivers. I expect them to be up higher. Typically the teams that you see come out straight out of the gates. It, honestly, this isn't too much of a surprise. I should say typically when we get into practice, the teams that come out hottest right out of the gates are always Andretti and Ganassi. And they just like, oh my gosh, look, they're so consistent. They're so fast. And then out of nowhere, you get some of these other players that step in closer to qualifying. So I can't say for certain. I mean, I wouldn't, I, there's so many, there's, I think there's a good handful of drivers that could win the poll. But I don't – I mean, Scott Dixon has a really good chance, but I'm going to say no just because where conditions could be. Because conditions could be on Sunday could be a lot more like they were when they came out for the oval test back in April. A little bit cooler, windier, cloudy, not the best conditions, but ability to put up fast speeds. So – I, that's why I'm going to say no, and I wouldn't be surprised to see somebody like Joseph Newgarden. Yeah, Newgarden, Newgarden was up there for me too. Yeah, it's just one of those things where you, you you feel you feel like you should be picking it, but also like it just doesn't happen as often enough to be like, oh yeah, for sure it's going to happen. So I mean, I wouldn't even be surprised to see Jimmy Johnson get it. Yeah, that would be pretty. I cool. mean, let's be honest. He's he's running Ganassi power. He's a Ganassi driver. Yeah, and they come out like I said, they come out of the gate hot. And they're consistently hot. And this is a guy that knows this track. He's finally somewhere in his element. And look where he was in his element. He did pretty well at Texas. Felt comfortable there. So I, I wouldn't be surprised to see. I mean, I, I, I'll at least say this. Jimmy Johnson is going to be in the, the Fast 12. 
right. Well, let's go ahead and get into it then. Our our qualification <laughs> predictions. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do our prediction for uh, highest qualifying rookie, our pull sitter, and then our front row. Um, so and we'll do we'll do pull sitter and front row at the same time. Um, but as far as highest qualifying rookie, I'm gonna go with Cal Eilat. Um, I you know he's been turning. You know, he's turned uh, two of the best, if not the best, qualifying efforts among rookies this season. Again, um, writing this question, I totally spaced that there are Indy 500 rookies that are also not rookies uh, for the full-time IndyCar circuit. So, I, But I'm just going to stick with Cal Eilat. I think he's going to do a good <laughs> job. He was 11th at Barber. Uh, he was 7th last week at the Indy GP in terms of qualifying. He uh, he was 18th during the open test, and I think 16th or 17th today. So he's... He's he's been about middle of the pack. I think he can get to twelfth. Um, you know, he's the fastest among the twenty twenty two rookie class. Uh, you know, Jimmy Johnson and Romain Romain Grosjean are Indy five hundred rookies, but we're and we're quicker during the open test. But as far as when we're looking at you know, just strictly full you know, rookies as far as the whole series is concerned, I think uh, I'm gonna go with Kyle Eilat. I think he's gonna have a good uh Saturday and Sunday. Well, I'm a traditionalist. I'm going Indy five hundred rookies. I'm going Jimmy Johnson. I mean, well, this he's proving it, proving it right now. Oh yeah, that he he's going to be up there, and he's going to be a, a force to contend with this this month. So, Jimmy Johnson will be the highest qualifying rookie. And Jimmy Johnson, I'll go ahead and say it. Jimmy Johnson's going to be the Indy 500 Rookie of the Year. Oh yeah, I mean, it's really shaping the, up to be that way. I mean. You know, we're going to so make weird to say right. Jimmy Johnson's going to be the 5500 rookie of the year. It's like, <laughs> I that, mean, that's not even fair. <laughs> right. I mean, I, it's, it's, it's the, the relationship between with me and Jimmy Johnson has definitely changed over time. He went from, you know, when I first started, wa- you know, when I was watching NASCAR and he first came into like the, uh, what used to be the Bush series, you know, you have that wreck at Watkins Glen that made me a little bit of a fan of him just because that was just an insane crash. And he jumps up and, you know, was jumping on the you know roof of the car afterwards. Cause everybody thought like, Oh man, this is a really bad wreck. He's probably really hurt. Um, and then he goes on to be, you know, a driver I'm not a big fan of because he just all he does is win, 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 no matter what. That's all he does. Um, and uh, and then now he's come to IndyCar, and I like want him to do well so badly. So yeah, I mean, this could be maybe if he does well, and he like wins this thing, that will get a fire burning in the belly of uh, Jeff Gordon, and he'll be like, I'm gonna come race one Indy 500. I would love that. Jeff that Gordon. that will be the first sellout since the 100th running. I can guarantee it. I can yeah. guarantee it. Yeah. I mean, could you imagine? Like, let's have a Indy 500 where a team forms of Tony Stewart and Jeff Gordon. Tony Stewart can't fit in an Indy car anymore. I'm sure if if Jeff Gordon was like, "Hey, we're gonna be teammates at the Indy 500," he could he could work out and do. It. If I if I can start going to the gym again and start slimming down, Tony Stewart can go to the gym again and start slimming down. I no, mean, I, if I was Jeff Gordon, I'm gonna I'm pushing Dale Earnhardt Jr. to do it. Be a good one too. I yeah, I mean, especially with his work with NBC. I mean, going back through which I need to. Have you watched Lost Speedways? Right no, I need to. I, I just, I, I'm the I've same got way. too many shows running at right. one time, and I need to get some done. I don't necessarily have too many shows, but I also just bought MLB TV because it was supposed to be at a discounted price, um, which I didn't get the discount. That's kind of really sad, but <laughs> like, I know. Um, but uh, so like, I I need to get some usage out of that too. But yeah, I keep seeing Lost Speedways pop up on Peacock, and I'm like, I need to watch that, and I just don't. But I need to. Um, but like I was going back through when I was looking at like qualifying results from past years, like I, f- I forgot Kurt Busch ran the Indy. Like that's the year one. Tony Kanaan won. Yeah. Like Kurt Busch almost won it. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Kurt Busch has ran a couple of them, which is wild. Um, so yeah, I, I would love to see more of the NASCAR names that I grew up with do well. I mean, like even if Jimmy Johnson ends up winning the whole thing, I'll be excited. <laughs> Um, so let's go ahead and give our front row. Uh, for me, the pole sitter is going to be Scott McLaughlin. I know it didn't really show in uh, the in the te- in the qual- practice session today. Um, like I said, a lot of the Penske drivers were just shaking the cars out, right. getting tires scuffed. McLaughlin, I'm sure that's how they did. They ran, went out there, ran a couple laps, pulled back in, changed tires, went back out. Same thing. 
Lachlan That's has great. been uh, in the top six in qualifying three of the five races this season. Of the eight drivers who turned at least 170 laps in the open test, McLaughlin was the fastest. He was fifth overall. So uh, I I I have a I have faith that Scott McLaughlin can uh, start that 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 turnaround for Penske. Uh, you know here, uh, you know on qualifying weekend. The rest of the front row for me. If I can't pick Scott Dixon to be first, I'll pick him to be second. He's going to be in the inside of row one. Uh, he's uh, he's started on the front row of three of the last five Indy 500s. Mentioned earlier that he's got four poles to his name. He was fourth quickest in the open test. Dude knows how to get around Indy, and he knows how to get around Indy fast. So I think Scott Dixon will be in the inside of row one, or sorry, the middle of row one. Uh, and then Joseph Newgarden uh, rounds out the front row for me. Um, Newgarden was fastest at the open test. He's been in the top 10 in all five uh, qualifying sessions this season, so he's been fast all year qualifying. So it's going to be a very Pinsky-centric front row as far as uh, what I'm predicting. So my pole sitter, I actually have Joseph Newgarden as the pole sitter. Um, I think he's due, yep. but then he's going to turn I'm going to make this prediction. He's going to turn around and – Gonna pull Scott Sharp. He's gonna wreck, gonna wreck in the first. Bust. He's gonna wreck in the first turn of the first lap. So, but I'm going with Joseph Newgarden because that open test and just how similar the conditions are going to be this weekend from that compared to that open test. Um, so I like his chances there. Uh, I I have actually have Renus VK at, in the middle of row one, and then on I have my uh, third place car. I'm going with Scott Dixon. I like it. Uh, it's a, I like that front row. I like Renus V cap there too. He wasn't he? He was like fifth today, I think too. So I mean, he's he's been pretty fast. He he's been a front row guy here recently for in the 500. I think last year he was on the front row. I was like, uh, now you're making me want to. In the Bitcoin car. Yes. Yeah. I think you're right. I think you're right. Here, let me let me before we go here, let me look it up. 2021 grid. Yeah, he was uh, third. He was outside row one. Uh, it was yeah. Dixon, Herta, and VK in row one. So there you go. Herta. Yeah. Whoa. Okay. All right. That may, may make me reconsider my. <laughs> <laughs> Everything you've heard for the last hour, just throw it out the window. Is, uh, is wrong. <laughs> it, it's wrong. No, no. I'm good with what I said. I'm sticking with it, sticking to my guns. But yes. Joseph Newgarden is going to be the pole winner. Renus VK going to be right there. And Scott Dixon in third. I like it. 